I acquired a new toy a few days ago. It's an APC Beck UPS Pro 650. The 650 means 650 volt amps, which is marketing speak for 400 watts, because they like to rip you off that way. So I was attracted to this unit for uh, three reasons. First, it's made by American Power Conversion Company, which is always good. Second, I went online and looked at the battery type that it takes, and it takes a 12 volt battery. A lot of the larger units take uh, 24 volts or even 48, which uh, gets pretty expensive to replace, and I don't have 48 volt batteries sitting around, so I can use a, a 12 volt battery with this one, which is nice. And third, and most importantly, it was free. So I grabbed it. Uh, it looks to be in uh, pretty good condition, probably weighs 15 pounds or so. It's got these two dangling plugs on the back. Not sure uh, who thought that was a good idea. I guess they ran out of room for outlets or something. But uh, I have no idea if it works, uh, if I have to fix it or what's going on with it. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, plug it in and see what happens. Nothing. Well, absolutely nothing. Uh, I can't say I'm too surprised. It doesn't really feel like it has a battery in it. <coughs> and uh, sometimes these things don't do anything at all if they don't have a battery. Of course, they also don't do anything at all if they don't work. So, I'm going to uh, see what's going on with the battery in here. And it looks like uh, battery axis is on the bottom here. <laughs> this is kind of funny. They have the uh, battery access panel here, and it has battery in no fewer than four languages, all of them unnecessary, because it has a picture of a battery right there. I don't get it. Anyway, I'll take that cover off and see what's going on. That's kind of what I thought. Empty. <clears throat> there is nothing in there at all. Eh, except two battery terminals. Well, that means that I'm going to have to go find a battery to see if that helps this thing power up. And uh, I think I have just what I need. I'm going to go get it. Alright, I'm back with the battery. And uh, I should mention that these units don't take a standard automotive type battery. Uh, they are lead acid, but uh, you'll need to put in either a gel battery, which doesn't leak, or a valve regulated battery, which doesn't leak as long as it's stored upright, or an AGM, absorbent glass mat battery. Any one of the three will work in a unit like this. Um, it's just uh, not a good idea to have spillable battery acid in your house. But I do have a valve regulated battery here, which is obviously not the proper battery for this unit. But uh, that's just fine because I don't intend to use this unit for what it was intended for. <clears throat> um, actually uh, acquired this battery free uh, more than 10 years ago and it still works. According to the date on the side, it was manufactured in 1995. That makes it 17 years old today, which is uh, pretty amazing. Goes to show if you take care of a battery, it actually does last quite a while. Um, now I just have to figure out uh, how to hook these up. We'll grab some stuff for that. Free battery, free UPS. They're meant for each other. Alright, I have some uh, alligator clips here. These are nowhere near heavy enough for uh, this battery and load combination, but I don't really care about that right now. I'll worry about it later. I'll just hook it up and see what happens. Ground to negative and positive to positive. And I'll plug it in. Well, it clunked. That's a good sign. Let's see if it turns on. Yep, 
There it goes. It's testing the battery. That part seems to work. And switches back to AC power. So, it looks like the unit probably works. Um, one thing I am curious about is the output of it. So, I am uh, going to hook up a, uh, a multimeter and see what that looks like. Turn it off here. This unit supposedly has a transformer in it. So if your wall power goes to a brownout condition, to low voltage, it'll boost it up without needing the battery. And uh, similarly, if your wall power is too high, if it's more than 120 volts, it uh, will switch to a different winding on that transformer and uh, make the output voltage in the correct range again. So I'm going to test that feature to see if that part works. Uh, this is a, uh, a variable auto transformer. Auto meaning that uh, it's tapped, so the output is still live no matter what voltage I set this to. But uh, this is wired up to go between 0 volts and 280 volts. I don't want to do 280 on this, it'll probably damage something, but uh, I'm at least going to use the range around 120 to see how this works. So I have my uh, transformer plugged into the wall. I have my UPS plugged into the output, so I can vary the voltage going to this, just like your power company is giving you bad power. And uh, it's still connected to the battery. Here's my uh, voltmeter again. It is an RMS meter, so it should read the correct voltage, whether it's on battery or wall power. So right now, the uh, incoming power is 123.7 volts AC. And if I adjust this higher, slowly turn this knob, you can see that the voltage is going up. 128, 114. It just clipped, so it went to a different winding on the transformer. I thought 128 volts was too high. Now it's uh, adjusting it down. If I keep cranking it up, now it switched to battery power because the incoming power was too high voltage. Move this back down. We're good again. Crank it the other way. 109. Now it went back up to 124. So it's boosting it some. I'll keep turning. Yeah, it clicked again. So it must have uh, two windings for boosting the voltage and one for converting it down. That's kind of interesting. I don't think I'll actually use that feature, but uh, I just wanted to demonstrate it here and make sure that that part worked. And it does. That's uh, kind of neat, really. That's what you get with the better quality UPSs. A lot of the cheap ones will just immediately run off the battery and uh, draw your battery dead when your incoming power is not good. This one does a much better job of handling that. I verified that my UPS works. Now I'm going to take it apart and see what's inside. Looks like there's four screws on the bottom here holding it together. These APC designers are nice. They just use standard Phillips bits instead of some sort of security screw. Saves me the time. And it is unplugged, if anybody's wondering. Alright, there we go. Inside of the UPS, there's the uh, transformer to convert between 12 volts and 120. The control board on top. This must be pretty old because it's all through hole. Well, there's four, uh, four transistors in here. You probably can't see it quite in the camera, but four of them in there, each clipped to a heatsink. Those would be your H-bridge that uh, drive your transformer to make 120 volts AC on battery. And uh, the main problem that I have right now is that uh, all I have are these two way too small leads going to this thing. And I don't have anything to connect these two, so they're pretty much useless to me. Um, so I think that I'm going to make a better cable for this. Something that's longer, heavier gauge, so that I can hook this to uh, a battery whenever I want. And for that, I have some uh, cabling here that I picked up uh, um, 
on surplus sale. It's a 8 gauge high strand count copper wire. It has these connectors on the end that, I don't know, they seem nice at the time, but uh, I guess I'm not going to use them. <clears throat> so I think I'm going to hook that up to this thing and uh, put a couple of clamps on it so that I can just hook it up to whatever battery I want. But to do that, I'm going to have to dissect this thing a little bit more. In order to take this apart further, I need to uh, pop off this face. It looks like it just slides straight up and comes right off. I'll have to be careful with that cable. And then there's uh, six Phillips screws on top. I'll just take those loose. The screws are all out now. It was uh, kind of a pain because these happen to be self-tapping screws. They drilled the holes, but uh, didn't uh, put the threads in the holes. So the screws were binding the entire way out. But uh, this still doesn't seem to be free. So I started plugging things in here. Here's the control board. Inside here that uh, you can't see is a surge suppressor for a modem, which I really don't care about. On this board we have a communication port. Uh, you can talk to the uh, control I see here uh, through RS-232. Uh, maybe I can disable the annoying beeper that way, uh, but that's for a later time. We have uh, some surge suppression on here, some mobs and a, a choke. Um, that uh, might be nice depending on what I use it for. But uh, all the connections for the transformer, of course. There's uh, two 40 amp fuses in here, down at the bottom, so that means that our battery is fused at 80 amps, which is uh, good to know for the future. Uh, four relays, those are going to switch between the battery power and AC power, as well as switch the different taps of the transformer, like uh, I had demonstrated earlier. Uh, a lot of the control logic on here. And uh, then uh, we have four FETs over here, transistors. Um, each clipped to a very heavy heat sink. Um, it's clear from looking at this that uh, they had intended this to run for only a short amount of time. And uh, these are just big blocks of metal that uh, will warm up over time and eventually overheat. Uh, but their intention was that with this puny little battery, it won't run long enough to actually make enough heat for this to get too hot. So I may have to do something there to uh, improve that if I want to use this as an inverter. Uh, and here is a, a current transformer. It has a single loop of heavy gauge wire and a whole bunch of loops of fine wire. And uh, what that's doing is amplifying your output current so that this board can sense how much load you have out there to uh, either adjust, uh, adjust certain things on there or shut it down due to overcurrent. Um, so that's uh, the basics of, of this. I think I'll just leave all these connected. Um, so that I don't forget how it's connected up. Otherwise, the reason I took this apart was uh, twofold. One, I have these connections here <coughs> for the uh, it doesn't go through there for the battery, and uh, I want to redo these with some better wire. And secondly, this battery box looks like it's held in by four screws. I'll need a longer screwdriver to get at some of these, but uh, I'm going to take this out because it's just in my way and I don't ever plan on putting a battery in there. So I'll do some work on this and uh, show you what, uh, what I did when I'm done. I have the UPS most of the way apart now. Uh, I took the, uh, the back off um, to be able to get at some of this stuff and it's pretty much just a transformer bolted to a metal plate anymore. Um, but uh, I started crimping on some of these uh, some of these ends so I could plug them into the board, and uh, I was thinking, how am I going to route this outside of the APC case without uh, running it through a sharp metal hole that's going to rub through and be dangerous? And uh, I thought that I have these two stupid plugs on here that I don't even want, and uh, the diameter is about the same, so I'm going to see if I can get these grommets out and uh, run my battery cables right through here, positive and negative. And uh, that should be a really solid connection. Um, 
But uh, I'll see if I can get these out and reuse them for that. I'm done making the first set of modifications to the UPS. And uh, I have a few parts left over, some wires, connections, these stupid things, battery box. Let's chuck those aside. And uh, this is what I have now. UPS, I put the cover back on. If I turn it around, we have the uh, battery clips with uh, strain relief here, very solid. And uh, the power cord. So, it looks... Uh, pretty neat yet I think and uh, I should just be able to uh, clip this on to onto battery and uh, UPS is not plugged in usually on these units you can turn them on by holding in the power button and uh, releasing it immediately after it starts up. And there we go. It runs off the battery. Uh, just to uh, test it out a little bit, I have this uh, 60 watt light bulb. I'm just going to try plugging that in, make sure that it can at least power a small load. Okay, that's plugged in. Success! beeps every once in a while to let me know that there's no line power. Uh, once again, I'll have to fix that because that's pretty annoying. But uh, that's going to be it for the first set of modifications. Now I can use this device as, uh, as a battery maintainer. If I plug this in, I can still use it as a UPS if I want. Just clip on any battery. Um, or I can use it as a standalone inverter. And uh, I can check out the uh, capabilities of it next to see what it can really do and uh, I'll see what kind of additional modifications I want to make after that.